everybody, it's Tyler here at Ontario Provincials. Check in, 44-76 Waffles, a phenomenal season by them so far. As recording this, by the way, at the end of uh, qualification rounds, Waffles having a phenomenal run so far, so getting ready for playoffs. But double goal cling bling just a little while ago at Waterloo, and take a look at their robots so far. This is an incredibly packaged machine that we'll be going through. Really like how they're doing their handoff here with their intake as well. We'll be talking about some of their different iterations that they go through, and also a great uh, scoring mechanism as well, too. So, so much to break down here with Waffles. Let's learn more about them coming up here on Behind the Bumper. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the Join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. Sebby, let's start off talking about your intake they're using as well. You've done some changes to it, so talk to me about what it's comprised of and then uh, what changes you made coming into the Provincials as well. So originally we started off with just these two bottom rollers, but as we iterated and improved, we decided to add these two top rollers so that we could funnel better into the feeder and shooter. We decided to use Katan grip tape and no Katan grip tape on the top because when the note would come in, sometimes it would get stuck and dragged under. So then it would just get dragged and stuck inside the robot. So we reduced the grip on the top. We also, at the beginning, we had no poly cord and decided to just have a churro across the entire intake. However, this proved not useful because the note just got stuck on the churro and couldn't actually go inside the robot. So we decided to use poly cord for the next iterations. After those next couple of iterations, we decided to reduce the poly cord to three instead of five because the grip on the edges would cause the note to get stuck and our feeder wheels weren't able to center it quick enough. So we got rid of the ones on the edges so that when the note would go in, it would get pulled towards the center. Um, on our intake, we originally had quarter inch Lexan. After our first event, we did have issues with bearing retention and it's snapping at the bottom where the dead axle is attached down here. Um, however, for our next event in Waterloo, we decided to improve it to be quarter inch aluminum so that we wouldn't have issues with bearing retention and snapping. We were worried that it might bend, but that proved not, hap to, not to happen. After New Market, we solved our bearing retention by having four rivets holding the bearings in on either side. And this has proved pretty good at holding in the bearings. We haven't had any issues with it slipping out and yeah. So when you were analyzing the Crescendo game, uh, for your team, why did you choose to go with uh, centering being on your actual like shooter mechanism itself versus having that as part of your intake? We believe in a touch and go. So we want to be able to touch the note and not have it dragging around while it's trying to center in the intake. So we have it intake, it's in the robot, nobody can get it except us, and then it centers into the robot. Why don't easily. we see a note come in and we can take a look what that looks like. Sure. A very smooth process as it yes. goes on that. A great design overall. I love hearing about the iterations as well, too, that your team has gone through. Let's pass over to Kenneth, who's going to talk uh, more about that note journey going through on this here. So talk to me about, we got a cool elevator uh, with your uh, shooter and amp uh, mechanism. So let's talk more about it and, of course, demo it off. Yeah, so the first thing that the note um, touches going into the shooter are these feeder wheels out here. And this is actually already um, something that we changed. So on our original shooter, um, we kind of had uh, a pretty basic, just like cut and dry, just feeder wheels going into the shooter as though the note was already going to be centered uh, going into it. However, we realized that we need to have a wider angle for the note to be received into the shooter accurately because um, we're having so many issues with notes getting stuck. So we actually changed that before our first competition. And as you can see up here, so um, we have vertical compression on the notes along with horizontal compression provided by 3D printed rollers uh, that are just passive. So this allows our shot to be extremely powerful and also very stable. Um, something that we originally were planning on doing was actually having the wheels be on, on either side of the sh uh, ring when it was being shot out. Uh, however, we found that this didn't put enough spin or power on, onto the shot for it to go very far at all. So we opted for a vertical compression of uh, half an inch. So another thing you'll see here is that these two wheels are not mechanically linked in any way. This is something that we actually just designed for this event. So previously we had the top wheels uh, mechanically linked um, and the way that we put spin on it was by offsetting the wheels to be off center so that they touch the note at different points and release them at different times. However we found with this yes it made the shot pretty stable however they all started to curve to the left and sometimes they'd be inconsistent. 
So by opting for two separate uh, non-mechanically linked wheels, we can spin them at different speeds, and that will add on the spin without having the curve on it. Uh, so this is something that we saw a lot of other teams do, and we thought it would be something good to implement ourselves as well. Uh, now moving on to the pivot here. So as you can see, the shooter can uh, kind of be in different positions. So when it's intaking, it's in this configuration. And this is because we have uh, one pivot motor uh, inside of the, our elevator carriage. Uh, and it pivots it using a chain um, with, I think, a 15-1 reduction right now. Um, and that just allows our shooter to like be able to like have a degrees of freedom, right? Um, and when combined with the elevator, it really allows us to like have a lot of choice in which type of shot we want to do, have a lot of set points. Um, so I'll talk more about the elevator, I guess. So if you pan around to the back here, you'll see three winches. So these two winches on the outside, they're rigged continuously. So it's just one rope that just goes up and down across all the pulleys on the robot. And uh, these ropes are rigged so that when the rope, uh, when, the rank, when the length gets shorter, the elevator will um, rise up. So that's really good for just like regular in match. However, when we're trying to climb, that would not work since there's no tension on the elevator to pull it down. So that's why we have another spool in the middle that is rigged opposite directions to the others. And this just provides downwards tension so when we're climbing, we'll actually be able to like actually climb up, right? Um, now another notable thing is that uh, it's hard, a little hard to see. Can you raise up the elevator? So you'll see here, we have some constant force springs uh, attached to the first stage. So this is there because we found issues with the first stage rising up to be higher than the carriage with the shooter. And that caused the shooter to actually be blocked by its own elevator. So by pulling these down, uh, it allows the carriage to always be at the top and always have the shooter able to actually have a clear shot. And that was just due to the weight differences between the carriage and the first stage elevator. So another thing you'll be able to see, you can get a better shot of the spools here and also the gearboxes. So we have quite a large reduction on there. Uh, I don't know off the top of my head. And that just helps. Um, it's helped by like the two Krakens, which are really powerful, so that our elevator is pretty smooth. And we haven't, we haven't had any issues with it um, not having enough power or being shaky at all. Um, yeah. So looking at uh, when you're uh, going through your different states and stuff like this, uh, how does your climbing actually all integrate in regards to how this elevator works? Because it seems just like a really simple, elegant solution that works very well for your team. Yeah, so we just have the hooks directly on the shooter. So originally we were planning to have them on the carriage. However, we found that the geometry for the carriage didn't actually pan out the way we expected it to in SolidWorks. So we improvised and made some on the shooter. And these have been really, really good because it's like the driver doesn't really even have to try to line up that much. Like the curves on the shooter plate just kind of guide the chain into it. And with the shooter pivot as well, it just allows us to like use that a little bit as well to stabilize our climb and just make it even faster. And then can we see what an amp shot looks like uh, for your robot? Yeah, so an amp configuration, you can really see here that like the pivot really helps it out because it's able to bend all the way back. Um, to the point where the shooter's actually like pointing backwards and downwards. And then we can just output the note. Um, you should show some of the regular shot configurations and the high shots. So put in a regular shot. So in our regular shot configuration here, you can see that the first stage hasn't actually gone up yet. It's just a carriage being at the top of its length. And with the shooter pivot, this allows us to actually like be able to sink a shot like this, right? However, if we have defense, something that's really, really good about our elevator is that we can just shoot over it. So here's a tall shot. So as you can see, the elevator goes up, and that just helps uh, us shoot over defense. And this is all in the code, so that it's still able to shoot from the same places. And um, yeah, it's just a different shot configuration. I just want to say I really appreciate on the uh, undercarriage there of your uh, scoring mechanisms. You got a little waffle layout as well too, so very thematic with your team. Yeah, we also have that on the bottom shooter plate. However, you can't really see it here, but yeah, I can yeah, yeah. So you can see there, we, we tried to go for like a waffle grid, um, just to kind of keep it in theme where we could. Yeah. Yeah, dig it. Hey, Waffles, congratulations on a great run this season so far. Of course, we can't wait to see how you do here at Provincial. So good luck the rest of the way, and thanks for taking time to tell us more about your team. You got a fantastic robot. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 